Hi, my name is Jason Cox. Uh, we're here with the Oral History Project for the City of Kaiser Points of Interest Committee. Our very first guest is Evelyn Franz, who I believe is a lifelong resident of Kaiser. Is that right? True, yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, wh uh, when you were born and kind of the, the family homestead. I understand you guys had a big farm right out near River Road. Well, yes, my father bought this 35-acre farm at the end of River Road and Cherry Avenue, now where it's called Kaiser Town Square. And we moved out in October of 1926. So how old were you at the time? Six years old. Uh, do you remember the move to Kaiser at all? Oh, yes. Very nice. Um, so I understand, when you say River Road, um, was it actually... It was a dirt road at the time, wasn't it? Not River Road. River Road was just a single patched road, however, mm -hmm. <laughs> not like it is now. And Cherry Avenue was a graveled road that intersected at River Road. Now, your maiden name was Melson. Melson, yes. And um, how long did your family own the farm there? Well, they bought it in 1926 and then t until 1961. What did your what did they grow there? Just about everything. There was a prune orchard it was the main thing. We had cherry orchard. We had wonderful gardens, all kinds of fruits. We had a swale and a pasture, and then the Claygate Creek at the east side of, of the property. So they moved there just a few short years before the Great Depression started. Yes. Um, how did that affect your family? Well, as a youngster. It didn't affect me because here where I was on this wonderful acreage, <laughs> we had all these wonderful fruits and we had cows, horses, pigs, chickens, self-sufficient almost. But, of course, it was hard for my older brother and older sister because of entering, they were in high school and college in those years, and it was hard for, the, for them. Mm -hmm. But otherwise... Um, we weathered it pretty well. So describe for me the drive. Um, you said you were at the uh, River Road and Cherry Avenue, kind of where they intersect. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, the house was a bit set back from the road. Yes. What did it look like as you came in? The house was a two-story farmhouse. I think, uh, according to my what I found out, I think it was the original John Force donation land claim house. And it was quite... We had a barn and another house beside it, and there was a prune dryer and a rabbit tree. It was quite a farm. Um, so your uh, father, he was a farmer, was he? No, uh, my father was not a farmer. Um, I look back now, I would call him a gentleman farmer. My father owned the Atlas Bookstore in Salem at the time. Mm -hmm. He was also a politician later, county commissioner for eight years, and a businessman. And he bought this farm, and I'm glad he did. <laughs> and then he maintained his ties in Salem with everything and then farmed on weekends and evenings. Um, so he wasn't exactly, quote, unquote, a farmer. <laughs> uh, so who, was, uh, who were some of your family friends growing up? Who, who did your family spend time with? Well, our family friends, one was uh, Terry Hogue, who was a member of the, your, the Points of Interest Committee. Her mother, Oral Smith, was a friend. Sylvia Claggett of the Claggett family, an old Kaiser family. And uh, the Blake family that had Willow Lake, they were friends, mm -hmm. and the Bowden family, which is an old family, and the Frogley family, which is an old first families of Kaiser, because oh. Kaiser was just big farms when we moved out, mostly, uh, at that time. When did you... Do you remember when you started to see, um, you know, obviously it's not a for farm corridor anymore, no. Um, what was it, um, when did you re really remember starting to see the transition? After sort of? World War II. Um, so 
when did you what were some of the businesses that started popping up that you well, remember? Well, the first ones, well, of course, a very well, very first business, if you want to call it that, was Ward Russell's sta little gas station. He sold bread and candy and things by the old school. But be, just before the war, there at the intersection of Cherry Avenue and River Road, there was a Union gas station, and behind it was Smith and Ward grocery and hardware store at the intersection. That must have been the late 30s. Um, yes, just before Pearl Harbor, 41. What was, um, what do you remember from, who were your schoolmates at Kaiser School that you remembered? Well, Sylvia Claggett, Eileen Holden Johnson, Zilla Frogley, Schooley, and uh, there's Lorraine's son. Her father had the peach orchard where Fred Myers is now. And Phil Blake, a lot of the old first family children who were my age. So do you, you attended Kaiser School then, uh, correct? All eight years. Mm -hmm. um, who, do you, um, who was your favorite teacher there? Well, let's see, favorite? I can't really say. I had, we won't, I had four teachers. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about some of them? Um, yes, my friend uh, Eileen Holden Johnson, her mother was a first grade teacher. My third and fourth grade teacher was Cora Clark Beardsley. And then in the fifth and sixth grade was Eva Kelso. And in the seventh and eighth was Janet Kirk. Um, what would, uh, so when World War II uh, or when Pearl Harbor happened, you would have been, um, how old would you have been? Well, let's see, was, uh, I was married in 1940, and that was in 41. I was 20. Did your husband end up going? He went to Offers Candidate School. Mm -hmm. He volunteered. Mm -hmm. um, how do you remember the atmosphere? What do you remember about Kaiser during the war? Let's, uh, let's see. Well, I had my first child in 43. Well, things changed. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Well, you didn't have things. You couldn't get a refrigerator or a washer. Rationing went into effect and sugar and butter and all those things. You had little coupons. I still have those little books at home <laughs> that showed how to do. Things started changing and it just changed so gradually you really didn't, you didn't notice it because everything was changing, mm -hmm. it seemed like. Um. So there was, uh, do you remember when the, did, did you go to school with um, any Japanese children? For oh, the yes. We had uh, quite a few Japanese children in our uh, grades. I have pictures of them in the classroom, pictures, the Pakudas, the Watanabes, and um, two girls. Yes, we had several. Mm -hmm. They came from Lake Labish. Uh-huh. Um, how was, do you remember how that community was affected in the months after Pearl Harbor? Lake Labish? Mm -hmm. The Japanese community. Well, of course, they were interned, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, well, I was so busy raising a family then, I didn't really pay too much attention to that. Sure. To tell you the truth. But they were affected, of course. Some never did get over it, of course. Um, what businesses did your family like to go to a lot when you were a kid, a, a, a child, and as and as a young adult? What family, what businesses well, did you frequent? Of course, it was during the Depression, and then like our family, we can't, mother canned everything and did her own baking and cooking. So the, I think the, about the only time went to businesses buy fresh meat, probably, mm -hmm. because I can't remember having any canned goods hardly <laughs> those years. Um, how did your family, um, so you were a young mother during, when, the war, when the war was happening. Yes. Um, how did you manage to, did you pretty, was it living off the land more or less? No. I say, um, well, it was hard to explain. I hadn't thought through too much. Well, coming from the Depression, you just got what you needed, not what you wanted. Mm-hmm. So when the rationing came on and everything, it just was kind of an extension of not having things. So it didn't, everybody was in the same boat. So we just all kind of weathered it, kind of went along with it the and, way it was. 
Um, one of the committee members told me you used to roller skate to school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> River Road was a combination of uh, patches and cement, I guess, and tar mm -hmm. for that patch. Now, Lorraine's son would come from her house. I say they lived near Fort Fred Myers. Her roller skates, and then I'd be waiting at the end of the lane on mine, mm -hmm. and then we'd roller skate down to Kaiser School. No cars, believe it or not, because <laughs> all the teachers were already there by 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then others would come from Willark Park, which is now Willark Park. They'd come from there on their roller skates, and sometimes we'd just roller skate around a while. But the tar, when it was cold, was so smooth and nice. <laughs> <laughs> roller skating wasn't really much fun, but it was <laughs> roller skating. And, of course, our skates weren't like they have now. Did the road ice over more in the winter then? Mm -hmm. I'm, I See, I always walked to school, and it seemed like it was always raining more or less. I can't ever remember having any problems with what was the ice. So let's talk about Kaiser right after World War II. Um, mm -hmm. People are coming home and new businesses. And uh, you said your family sold the farm in 61? No. The, yes, I, we sold the farm in 61. My father started um, subdividing it before that. And he sold the first part off to Berg's Grocery Store, where Kaiser Town Square is now. Mm -hmm. And it, that was one of the first in the, in the early 1950s. What what did you think at the time of sort of selling the farm off kind of place? Well, I was busy with my family and I that was my father's business or whatever it was and so I didn't really get involved too much or think really think too much about it. Mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Um do you ever when you're in that neighborhood think this do, do you ever see spots like this used to be where we would play, you know, or something oh, like that. Oh, yes. Can you give me any examples? Well, I go through the, quite a bit, and, of course, the end of the property bordered Claggett Creek, and it was on a kind of a knoll, a lot of oak trees, and afternoons I would walk from the house or, or ride my horse down to there and play in those woods and along the creek because it was hot days. It was really nice down, mm -hmm. down there. And I, when I go by there a lot, I think, I wonder what that looks like now. <laughs> <laughs> Houses. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. So you, we've talked about Kaiser quite a bit um, and what the area was like. You had a young family coming up mm -hmm. right after World War II, sort of, uh, you know, what's, you know, going into the baby boom era. Um, what was, uh, what were those years like for you and your husband? Well... We were busy, of course, and um, we moved back into the big old farmhouse when my children were young. And um, when Kaiser Town Square opened, it wasn't called that then, and there was a capital drugstore started. And I, my children were old enough, I, I got a part-time job at the drugstore, and I could just walk out my house up the lane right into the back, through the back <laughs> door of the capital drugstore, and then just, I was really close to home, and my husband, of course, worked for the state of Oregon, and so we, that was our life. Um, what, how long did the farmhouse stay up? Till 1961. Um, and that was when it was sold and sort of the whole yes, thing was yes. subdivided? I see. Um, it was divided before then. Uh, and when my father passed away in 55, and my mother lived lived on until 61, and then we sold the farm, the rest of it. it. The rest of it had been pretty much sold off and all that. So what were you doing when you met your husband? I was in um, high school. I, I found out I met him when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about when the two of you started dating? Were you, did you meet uh, at, the, at a beach? Uh, yeah. We met at the beach, and my husband was in college. He graduated from Willamette in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you came back. Um, what was it that kept you right here in this little area? Well, my father gave us a piece of the, on the front part of the land in the um, walnut orchard, a plot, and we built 
house, which is still there. It's a white house at the end of Cherry Avenue. It's crossed from Domino's now, I believe. I see. And we built that house. And uh, do you still live there? No, no. I moved. We moved just around the corner. Um, so uh, my understanding is when you moved to Kaiser, there was yet there wasn't electricity yet. Oh yes, in the house. Or, oh there yes. Was. Oh yes. Um, yeah, there was electricity. Oh okay, but it was the street lights then that weren't there yet. Oh no, street light. Oh no. Well, I, when you left Salem, you, it was dark. There weren't any lights in Kaiser. There weren't, Cherry Avenue didn't have anything on it until you got clear down to the end where the Reefus Farm was. I mean, there weren't lights like it is now. You, you, it was kind of scary at times, no lights in Kaiser, because farm houses were back off the road, it seemed like, and might be a little light here and there on a house, and that was all. Uh, what was it like when, what do you remember thinking when they got the street lights strung up? Well, everything came on so gradual, I can't really, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. can't really say, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, more it just kind of changed and grew with what came along. <laughs> um, so what did you, what did you do for fun when you were a kid? You mentioned playing uh, well, on the farm. Well, I, but... I love the farm. And I just enjoyed the creek. I, my father got me a beautiful mare. Morgan Black Horse when I was 12, and that was my life. I could get on her and explore Kaiser every afternoon, <laughs> which I did. And there was a lot of exploring to be done then, and you could get around. <laughs> I mean, you could go into the woods and things like that there and down by the river and watch the paddle boats, the paddle ships, ships, not ships, mm -hmm. paddle steel, stern wheelers go by. and things like that. It was fun. That's what I did. I had a good childhood. Um, tell me about the trips into town you would take with your dad. Well, my dad um, owned a restaurant in town called Peter Pan. And sometimes on Fridays I'd go in with him because he had a room in the Oregon Hotel. And I'd stay all night and work in the restaurant work. I'd fold napkins. <laughs> Because I wouldn't then go to Mickey Mouse Club at the Elsinore Theater uh -huh. on Saturday afternoons, <laughs> and then come home with him the next day. So, do you remember when River Road was widened to uh, four lanes? Well, in a way, I do, but I s really can't say that I do. Uh huh. Um, at what point? What? What did you think when the idea of incorporating this, you know, the, the idea of a city of Kaiser, of course, had been around for a long time? Well, I'm not very political, and um, it was fine with me. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. Um, it's got to be wild kind of looking at this, at this area that you grew up your whole life. It transformed. Oh, it has. But it has, it's sort of a poco a poco, little by little. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for people to realize what it, from what it used to be, what I remember, to what it is now. It's hard for like for you to even realize. Mm -hmm. A lot of this wasn't here, you know. Sure. Um, do you remember um, what was a moment that you remember sort of seeing, uh, thinking, "Wow, what? How much things have changed?" Was there was there a oh wow moment or just? No, because um, I've lived here see, most of my life, and it just kind of, you grow with it. And if things change, it just changed, and that was part of it. Um, so did you end up uh, going to high school? Uh, where'd you go to high school? Uh, Salem High School. Salem mm -hmm. High School. Um, what was the, and that would have been sort of coming into, when abouts would that have been? The when high did you school? graduate high school? When did I graduate? Mm -hmm. 1938, and we um, went to two years where Myron Franks was. That's where the old Salem High School was. Mm -hmm. And then the one year in the new Salem High School. Of course, it changed to North Salem High School in 1954 when the South Salem High School was built. Uh, what did you and your friends do for fun in high school? Well, I... Had rode the school. We had a school bus mm -hmm. that 
took us in and we had to come home every afternoon, of course, so it couldn't take part in any after school things. And in those days, you just didn't run into town like, well, like an evening or something like that. You didn't have cars to do that or the gas or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my fun, I say I had a good child, it was coming home it was riding my horse. That was, and I didn't care about, I didn't know anybody in Salem until I went to high school there mm -hmm. and all. So my, my life was on, on the old farmhouse, around the farmhouse and all around Kaiser and I was perfectly happy. Now when did you get your first car? Well, when we got married, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> what kind of car was it? It was a 96 Ford Coupe. Um, Black. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where, where were, did you and your husband take trips around the area? Did you oh, ever yes. go on car rides? Oh, yes. Where were some of the places you liked to go? Well, we like to take off for the beach quite often. Mm -hmm. We went to the World's Fair in San Francisco. We'd go to Reno. Just around. You guys got all, all over, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think of, what did you think of, uh, you mentioned you weren't political, but just from a philosophical standpoint, what did you think of this agrarian sort of rural transition to urban? Did you think that was well, good in the community? Well, I didn't tell you the truth. You know, it didn't really dawn on me that that was happening. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> um, so how many children did you have? Three. What were their names? Stanley, Alan, and Janice. And they were raised right there in that, in that house, More huh? or less, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, yeah, They have fond memories of the old house. What's, uh, what do you remember taking the kids to do when they were younger? Well, we went camping a lot. We'd go to Silver Creek Falls a lot. Just little, and to the beach. We'd take them on trips to California. Went to Disneyland with them. Went to Disneyland the first year they opened. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you have the ears still? <laughs> no, I wish I did. But we were, when we were there that time, you want to hear about it? What's that? <laughs> when you want to hear about a trip to Disneyland? 55? <laughs> Let's hear about it. We went, um, and we just had my daughter, um, the boys had stayed, we, they were in school, so they had to stay home with the grandparents. She was about four or five, and so we went to Disneyland. And we're walking around, and some men kept following us, and finally my husband went in and asked him why. He said, well, they chose us as the family of the day. Uh huh. And then they had a program in the evening over at a show house or something where you answered questions and another I answered the question right and another woman we won prizes and I have a recording of that and there was a wall a comedian called Wally somebody and she had my daughter come up and I have a picture of it and then he shot a gun and it scared my daughter so much she started crying of course <laughs> but <laughs> and she <laughs> Hasn't liked guns ever since. <laughs> but it was a fun trip. It was, uh, and I have pictures of Disneyland in the fi in '55. It looks a lot different now. Um, do you remember the? Got key oh, I'm sorry. We got sorry. keys to the kingdom too. Oh, cool. Did they did they unlock anything? No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the do you remember some of the bigger f this area as you know um, has had its share of floods over the years. Oh yeah. Um, was the family, were you far enough from the river and the creek that you ended up? Right, I understand where our house is situated in the big flood of uh, 1861 that was so devastating. The water just came around here and didn't get into the house. But every year when it rained, you knew it was going to be, there were going to be places in the River Road and Cherry Avenue where their water would go. We call them through the draws, be water, then water. And I'd know that I couldn't get to the pasture because there'd be water back there in a certain place. There, but um, none of the big floods even later on came around this area where we lived, fortunately. Uh, do you remember, um, what did it look like on, you know, if you were to drive down River Road in the middle of, say, um, when the big flood during the 60s? Um, 
What would it have looked like? Well, okay, if, uh, if you went down River Road, you know before you got to um, Sunset, you knew there'd be water going through there. That was the natural place for it to go. Of course, and then it went across behind and through uh, past Cherry Avenue and on back down to the creek. And then you'd go up to where Bur Burger King is now. There were two ponds. They'd be pretty full. And if we did have really cold weather and freeze, we could ice skate on them. Two or three winters, it got cold enough, they could ice skate on those little ponds. But that's, you just knew there were certain places. And then where Kaiser Times is now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the house on your right past the orangey house, I call it. Mm -hmm. That's where I, a friend of mine, Eileen Holden Johnson, that, there was a draw there, and that was always full of water. So we knew whenever the river, before they put dikes in, and mm -hmm. the river rose, you never, nobody ever even thought of building along the river until the, the dikes were put in. And you knew the water, there are certain places that's where the water would go. And unless they had a devastating flood, those were the main ones that would fill, though, every year. We knew it, you could generally get through them. Mm hmm. So. Did you have any family friends who, um, lost part of their houses or livestock or anything during those? Uh, now, a friend who lives off of Windsor Island Road, Barbara Baldwin Knighton, can tell you more about that. They had trouble with getting their cows sometimes through certain places where the water, because that's closer to the river where it would flood. But where we lived and where this house was, wasn't affected so much. Um, so you ended up, um, did you learn, uh, you learned Spanish, didn't you? Well, I, I didn't really learn it. I worked for the foreign language department, did their typing and everything, and I could type it and all that, but I never had a chance to really get into learning it. <laughs> but uh, I absorbed enough to get by. But. <laughs> Can you give me your best Spanish? No, just como sa, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and adios. <laughs> so when you think about, um, so you've spent close to some, gosh, 80 years here. In, Pardon? you spent something close to 80 years here in this area. Mm -hmm. um, when you think back, uh, what's, uh, what's maybe your pre-end of World War II, what's like your most pleasant memory of the area? Well, let's see. That's kind of hard to say. I say everything kind of changed so gradually. You got used to not having it, and then you got used to doing it. I think the main, I don't know if there's anything special I can really can't, can't tell you about. <laughs> a lot has changed, of course. I've seen a lot of changes mm. <laughs> and a havoc had to accept a lot of changes. <laughs> <laughs> what was, when you say accept, what was the, what's the one thing that comes to mind that was kind of hard to Well, swallow? one thing was the dress code at the workplace. Oh, yeah? It went from where you took pride in what you wore because you always work better when you look better to where they could come in raggedy jeans and skirts up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to wear, hmm, <laughs> and that kind of it was sad, and just the whole demeanor, and you started calling everybody for the first names, which I was brought up in the era where you respected and did things a little different, so it was hard to see that change. So I'm hoping that someday he'll go kind of back to it, but maybe it I should have worn my tie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, um, this has been the first installment of our oral history project. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, Ms. Friends, thank you so much for sitting down with us and sharing some memories with oh, us. Pleasure to do that. It was a pleasure. All right. Um, and that's it for today. Take care.